Okay, so that's the black work done on there. Um, there's a couple of little tiny areas I'm not quite happy with, which I'm gonna have another go at. To be totally honest, got a couple of little marks and things. I think it's bits of filler and various bits and pieces, but I'm gonna take care of that. Very happy with the way the fuel filler door went in. Um, I used a tiny, tiny little bit of filler just to do that. I just need to pop a rescribe a line in there. Um, and everything else. But it's all gone together very, very well, very, very happy. The bottom joints here were real problematic ones. Um, and I think we've done a cracking job on uh, filling those up with the actual using the liquid filler. Um, so I'm very happy with that. The tail ones went in exceptionally well as well. So that's okay. So basically all we've got to do now, we've got the little spring loaded um, front uh, flappy bits here. They've got to go on. Air brake system, I'm going to pop on as well now. I'm going to get that in. I'll talk you through that one as we do it. Um, and a few other little bits and pieces to go on. Um, the pylons, the way they fit, uh, there's a little recesses for them. Um, I'm gonna basically spray them as a separate and attach them afterwards, although you could do it now. So we're gonna get the primer on, we'll get all these bits on, and then we can get the wheel wells painted, and then we can get on with some proper paint. Okay, all those parts are on. Um, the speed brakes we were gonna have are open, but the option to have them open means a lot of work, and really we haven't got time for that one on this particular build, unfortunately. Um, so we're gonna do them as closed and they're fitted. Uh, the lessee's on on the top, which is that little dome thing goes behind the cockpit, that's on. Um, all the other bits and pieces are on. I've put on a couple of little aerials and bits and pieces there on as well. What I'm gonna do now, I've got the white paint all fired up. I'm gonna spray this in neat um, down into the wheel well. Now, why are we spraying it neat? For those of you who haven't seen the other video tutorial, is that you can spray it neat in there and it will coat and dry in one without too much fuss. It is rather speckly and messy, but it does do the trick. that's done. We're just going to put a bit into the backs of those, um, the actual uh, flaps areas, although we're going to spray them grey, it'll just give it a little bit of tone difference. And as you can see, the mess we're making while spraying the white, this is exactly the reason why we're doing it now. Um, because obviously that it will cover absolutely everything as you go around everywhere. So this is just the, the reason why we do it up front. So this can all dry, it'll dry all nicely, and then we can come along then and do the primer work, which will cover all this gray and all the mess and everything else up. The only thing else we've got to do is the floor here. That's all fine. Right, what we'll do, we'll pop that upside down. Actually, if we poke this over here for the moment. Okay, right, um, doors and things like that. I've got the nose wheel. I've just got some tweezers and a rubber band to hold it in position. So we're just going to give these a, a going over. It's going to be a two coat. This first one is say very, very heavy, thick coat to start with. So that goes on like that. We'll just balance that over there. And then what we'll do is we're going to come back in a minute with a thinner mix um, to spray all over which will give it a nice finish then, because obviously this will give you a, a type of finish you'd get on a pre-fall bomb. It's very, very rough. It's a little technique I used to do in bombs, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, but by spraying an extremely thick paint, you get a, a texture to it, which is great for doing bombs and things like that. So that's that one. Here's the door here. Let's get in there from all angles, tops, bottoms, middles, all the rest of it. Okay, so we've still got some left in there, so we're just going to pop some thinners now in there to take it up, not 50-50, probably more like 70-30 in favour of the uh, paint, because it is white. So we're going to give this a bit of a mix round. And a cocktail stick. just like so right so then we can do the insides of doors obviously you're going to have to let this blast its way out and you can take your bit of kitchen roll just wipe off the ends good point actually here we can probably show you 
Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see the build-up, the white lump um, on that prong there. That's what you have to watch out for when you're normal spraying. If you're normal spraying and you've got that up, you're going to have a horrible spray pan. The reason is the airflow as it comes out is going to get deflected off of that. It's going to stick to it. And every now and again, that big horrible lump like that is going to flick off and it's going to land right on your nice paintwork and ruin it in one. So every now and again, come along like we did just then, get your clean, and that's it. You can just literally pull it off just like that. So there we go. That's it all cleaned off now and we can carry on spraying. But there's a nice little moment there to show you because it's one of those things, if you're trying to get it to do it, it will never do it. Okay, you can hear the pitch change. Okay, that's that one done. And the others. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on spraying all of these now. All the other doors which are still on the sprues and the other bits and pieces. Um, which are here somewhere here they are uh, which are on the sprue and we can do that so I'm going to do the inside of the access door as well the ladder door whilst we think of it Let's do the inside of the nose wheel doors that's those done and anything else that is also going to be sprayed white now obviously we've got weapons and things to go on as well but we're not worried about those for the moment and now this is quite a wet mix so we're just going to go back and spray it on all those areas and it will give a nice glossy finish to those bits we just did. And then just pop them back to the nose wheels. And as I say, this will give it a nice gloss finish instead of the horrible one we had just then. But because it's white now, you're not going to get any bleed through, show through, and obviously it's got something to grip onto as well. Yeah, and we'll just leave those all to dry now. Okay, so now we're going to prime up. Usual thing, half a mil of thinners, half a mil of paint, 50-50 sort of mix. You can make it a little bit drier um, if you're in a situation where um, the kit's quite oily and various bits and pieces, perhaps you should have washed it in hindsight and all those things you think of. You can obviously come back and then uh, hit it with a thicker coat than you, what you would normally do. The trouble is, if you're going to put down a thicker primer coat, that's going to sort of affect your further um, coats of paint you put on there. Because what's going to happen is, um, when you put your next coat on, it's then going to sit into that particular primer coat. It's going to be quite rough, and it's going to have to work hard. A bit like if you're doing glosses and things like that, you know, you need it to be a nice glossy finish first. So do a primer, then perhaps rub it down, and then do a nice finish. Got one coming up soon. Um, and we're going to be doing a 132 P51 Mustang um, in chrome. Um, very, very nice to make it look like well, you know, the modern ones. Um, so I'm going to be doing that in a chrome. So that's going to be a, have to have a nice finish on that. So that'll be a, a good one to show you. Okay, so we're just going to prime on on here. We want it all to be the same colour. So obviously these dark areas down here, as we're doing here, we need to, a couple of coats extra on that to make it the same grey as everywhere else. So not only are we going to prime the aircraft here like this, we're going to prime, we've done that wing, we're going to prime the actual um, pylons as well that go on um, and things like that as well to make them all roughly the same colour. And obviously by priming as well, we're going over those areas where we sprayed white. And don't forget, as I always say, this is your sort of last chance. If you're going along and you're seeing there's a, a gap now or a bad join or anything that's going on, this is the bit where you can actually put it right and say, right, okay, well that's going to look like just the same as when I finished. So we need to take care of that now. So then you can just go along and uh, give it a spray. It's actually not too bad. I was thinking this is going to be a bit of a particularly nasty one to do, being an oily finish, but actually the Tamiya is going on there very, very nicely. And with no problems at all. So I'm going to carry on priming. Okay, there we go, primer on, it's nothing flash, it's just literally whack it on just to cover everything up so we can look at the joins and look at any bits and pieces. You're looking also for things that are rough, because obviously if you've got um, perhaps some filler build up, bits and pieces like that, then you can pop back now and sand them down with a very fine sponge. Um, if you're using the Mastercast as one, use orange or anything you know that's very, very fine and just gently polish it all up and get rid of any grittiness on the surface. Because obviously sometimes when you've got filler dust build up and bits and pieces, 
you know, it just does tend to appear. Also checking around canopies and windscreens and various bits and pieces to make sure all your joins are lined. Make sure all your panel lines are all complete and they go everywhere they're supposed to go. I've got to redo one just down here in the nose, just a little bit where we put in a, a little bit of filler. Um, and just checking it all over really, because as I say, this is the bit where you can see what you get here is what you're going to get with the paint on there. <clears throat> and obviously we're going to be doing weathering and with the washes and various bits and pieces and fading and uh, whatnot. So obviously, you know, we just need to have a good look and have a, a, a bit of a, a view of what's going to be on the next stage. So we're going to let that totally dry, check it all over, pop in these little, there's a, just a few, there's another one up here, a little panel line, which I need just to pop back in, um, have a look at it, and then we can get on with the main paint colour. Okay, lots of trouble with um, getting the right colour matches for this. Um, recently been at a show, um, picked up the guns range uh, after talking to a lot of other modellers, and they're saying that, you know, really the guns colours are spot on, straight from the bottle, straight onto the plane. So that's what I've basically done. We've gone for H301, 302 and 303 which is obviously the dark color um, which is the blacky color and then obviously we're going for the dark green and the light green nice easy numbers to remember and that's your european one colors they're absolutely spot on and they're totally the right colors sometimes obviously different manufacturers have different uh, colorants and things that they actually do but this one's come out really really well so what i'm going to do is load up the airbrush starting with the lightest green first and we're going to work our way through doing the camo we're all going to do it freehand so we can show you all those bits as well okay um Got the 2mm needle um, into the uh, actually Infinity, just the same. I'm not going to use any of the functions and the bits and pieces that I'd usually use on the Evo, but unfortunately I've dropped the Evo and done a little bit of damage to it, so we've got replacement parts popping in for that. So in the meantime, I'll just switch to the other airbrush um, and say it works no different from the other one. We're not going to be using all these little bits and pieces at the end of the way it all works. Basically, the only difference you've got, you've got a system at the back here which allows you to set the, the actual line, the amount of lineage. Um, great for inks, I should think like that, but for our type of painting, especially using acrylics, you tend to need to blow through and clean off and things like that. It doesn't like using it, so I tend to avoid that. You've got other little collars here for setting air pressures and bits and pieces, but we're not going to use that because we're just going to use the regulator. About 30 PSI is to say, treat these paints just as you would um, Tamiya. Um, they do tend to be a little bit thicker, if I'm honest. So what we're going to do, drop a thinners into the cover cup. We're not going to need a massive amount. Okay, then we're just going to pour in a little amount in there. Probably, so we're about 75% percent uh, sorry about 70 percent thinners to about um, 30 percent paint so we want quite a wet mix because we're spraying it down onto a prime surface it's all been primed with just tamiya gray so it shouldn't make too much of a problem so we're just gonna give this a good good mix and secret with all acrylics is to give it a very good mix so there we go that's all done test it down here as we go, so we can test some squiggly patterns. Okay, so what we're going to do now is basically work our way around the entire model, um, checking your references to see where they all are. Obviously, the callouts on the tails, um, it doesn't give you them for the actual inside of the tail. But uh, we're going to just go get the compressor fired up, a bit more air pressure in there, and we get started. <clears throat> okay, I tend to always orientate the, the aircraft to the same way as it is on the instructions. I've got the instructions literally just in front of me. So what we're going to do, we're going to start on this tail section, just down in here now it's going to be a bit tricky for you to see so what we'll try and do is zoom you in a little bit just bring you a little bit in here okay so this bank area all we're going to do is roughly nothing special we're just going to blow in um, this area here and just remember just go slightly over where you would Because when we come back with a darker colour, we can overlap it, but it's best to have it overlap than it is um, obviously certainly the other way around. Because at this point, we can be quite happy to just to spray it anywhere we really like. And we don't have to be too neat. The next ones as we go on, obviously they're going to have to be a little bit neater. There we go. Now obviously we are going to have to make um, small little guesses on how the tails go. Check your references. Um, I know for a fact on this one it sort of comes around on the back of the tail. I know you can't see this, just trust me on this one. Okay, so we've just done inside of the tail just like that. And on this one here I know it's green on the inside. All the way up. Just 
just like so. So what I'll do, I'll just pan out and you can watch as I go around. As I say, there's not a great deal to see um, doing this one at this precise moment. So we're going to do... Okay, so that's all the green work done now. Obviously, what we're going to do is our usual way of doing things. We're going to lighten up a panel. So we're just taking some normal flat white. Give it a good old shake. Just put that in the holder, just for one sec. Okay, so we're taking some Tamiya XF2. Uh, yeah, XF2. Uh, a touch more thinners. So we're thinning this quite heavily now. We're probably adding another half mil thinners. So paint make, mix ratio, we're talking rounds about... Uh, what are we now? We're probably about 80% um, thinners to about 20% um, paint all told. So we want a very, very nice liquid, very, very fluid mix. So obviously we're mixing two types of paint here, Guns and Tamiya, so make sure it has a very, very good mix. And we put three drops into probably one mil of paint. So we just make sure it's got a very good mix. Okay. Pop that out of the way, and then all we're going to go around is just do those center panels as we've done so many times before. So make sure your paint's out, make sure your air pressure's up nice and high. So then all we're going to do, as I say, just pick out individual middles, and as I say, if you can't see massive changes in it, then don't worry, because you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to come through sort of a massively different color. It's literally just for a bit of tonal change, just to break up the pattern. So obviously just kind of pop it along wherever you've got panels, big panels. Do it perhaps a little bit more. Leading edges, things where it's actually going to get warmed down. large panels you get give it a type of motley effect i.e. Um, back of flat here we're not just filling it in we're sort of randomly sort of speckling in it around another nice little technique that i do is little circular motions as you're actually doing large areas do it as a circle and it will give you more of a, a blotchy type of finish
Okay, so we've got the paint all loaded up now. This is the dark colour, the H302, which is the FS34092. Same thing, but what we're going to do is just carefully now, because we don't want to get any overspray onto the lighter colour as we've just done it. All we're going to do it freehand, so we've got it thinned down quite a lot, probably 70% um, thinners to 30% paint. We've got a primer coat on here anyway, so we don't have to worry about it not sticking to the paint and perhaps beading off and running because it's quite a, a coarse, it's going onto a flat surface, so it should be okay. Don't have your air pressure too high. I've got it about 30 PSI down here. So we just check our paint flow and we're all okay. We'll start down here in the tail section. Then all we're going to do is spray this tail area. So I know you just can't see in here for a second. I just need to get in here. But the first impressions of the gun's paints here is they spray very, very nicely. So we've just picked an area inside the tail there and we'll do the rest of this tail section. Very difficult for you to see, perhaps if I hold it at a better angle you might be able to get in there a little bit better. Um, here we go, we're just going to put this one in here. So there we go, we've got that wing area there, and obviously we've got the black area to go in, so we're not too worried about that. So there we go, that's just by getting that in there now. As you see, it's quite a nice tight pattern. As long as you've got your paint quite thinned down and not too much of an air pressure, um, you should be okay. So we're gonna do the same thing on the flap area. We just put the line going up like that, and then obviously it completely we're going in with that one like that now and basically we're just going to work everywhere around the entire model and then here obviously the um, wheel pods are all the same colour as the actual um, the leading edges as well. So we see we've put that side in there now and we can just slowly go around and build up everywhere doing it just the same. So if you keep your air pressure low, just go round and follow it round. And what I do when I do the black area in a moment we'll get you really zoomed in to show you up tight. But it's one of those things it's very hard to pick up on camera. 
So we just carry on for one moment doing these other bits and pieces. Okay, so there we go, that's all the green on. So the same thing we've done again, we've just literally lightened up and thinned out the green a bit. So then all we're going to do now is pop round and just pop in some um, little details, exactly the same as we did the other. Okay, last colour in. This is the dark colour, which is the blacky brown type thing. Um, obviously there's various areas on here of how it actually goes. So you, because it's your last bit you're doing, you could then think so, right, okay, we'll make this the nice sharp one and use tape to mask in, or, you know, certainly we were using the worms in other ones. And so this is all freehand, so it's slightly different. Now I'm gonna have to excuse me on some of this because it's all back to front to me so I can get it to you to show you on the camera. So there we go, we have it like this. So we're just gonna follow through with the dark colour. And then colouring in, little circular motions. And then you check your reference again. And there we go, we have it in there. So it's very difficult to pick it up on camera just like that. And then we're gonna just follow through and do all the other little areas. So I've just got one on this inside of this tail to do. That's the one there. And there's quite a big one that goes up onto the um, up of this engine up here. So we can take care of that. So we'll start on the top. And I've actually completely sprayed in the area up here. If we try and get in there. Um, Yeah. So I just do the outline roughly first of how I'm going to want it to go. Okay. Then we'll just backfill and colour in the actual major area and then we can just go around afterwards and sharpen it all up slightly. So obviously you want the nice pattern on the top here. and there we go all done all sprayed in um, as I say it's one of those ones you just take your time and because we're going to give it a, a nice weathering effect um, as in it's going to have a wash a little bit of post shading and various bits of touch-ups we're going to do to it afterwards and things like that that we can actually get away with not pre-shading it as we were saying and things like that but there we go that gives you an idea of how to do it that's all totally freehand saves a lot of time of having to get out you know obviously if you're using masks and bits and pieces like that so you can get the crack on with it straight away and get in there obviously you do have to take a bit more care and a bit more time and slow down and obviously be a little bit good with your airbrushing you obviously you know it does help having a, um, a quite a nice airbrush as well but it can be done even with a standard one just lower your air pressure slightly thin your paint really you can do it with a sort of a 0.3 needle things like that um they obviously have a 0.2 if you've got a 0.15 even better you can get a nice tight group there but just make your paint quite thin that's the secret to that and then that way um it will flow better come out the airbrush better atomize better and stick and stay put and you won't get the spitting so as soon as you start to spit you get the speckly patterns and all the rest of it we want it to be slightly blurred in i don't want it to be totally sharp on this one because I want it to actually look like it's weathered and bleached in and obviously the hard edges of the paint that get softened over time um, and so forth and so on and that's the idea between that one. So we're going to let that dry off now for an hour, let it get you know totally dry, we can then um, get on there and give it a clear coat right over everything to seal it in and then it's all handleable and then we can then do something with these engines and we can get them painted up in bits and pieces as well.